Okay, thank you very much. Very, very good afternoon, marhaba. And uh, thank you very much to Hazin University for giving us from Sabaya Gochan the opportunity to be here this afternoon again. Last year we were here. And uh, uh, to the distinguished speakers, uh, particularly the first presentation just now, Madam, excellent presentation. But I've got one small question I will ask you after it. Uh, I've got together with me a team from the uh, Sabe Gochan Airport as well, and uh, the students, uh, and all future, or our customers, you are all our customers in the airport, please continue to fly through Sabia Gochan. <laughs> Either you arrive or you depart through Sabia Gochan, domestic or international. <laughs> okay, we are in Istanbul, so please continue to depart and arrive through Sabia Gochen. Thank you very much. You are all our customers. We love you so much. <laughs> to Ayata, Madam, one small question as an airport operator. Uh, Madam, uh, to Ayata, one small question as an airport operator. Uh, Ayata vision seamless and efficient travel. Excellent. We have been working together as partners. But I would like to one day humbly and sincerely appeal to IATA to consider to have interlining between full service and low cost airlines. Baggage, particularly. You check in on the Pegasus Airlines and you can transfer your bag to a Lufthansa. We should have a day should be there. If not last week, it should have been tomorrow. Let's make it happen. Together, as an airport operator, I would like to look a day that we can have that facilities available. Thank you very much for your consideration. I would like to share about a bit about us, Malaysia Airports. We have 39 airports in Malaysia. Five international, 16 domestic, and eight are the airstrips in the interior part of the country. And uh, as a group, including airports in Malaysia and foreign, Sabia Gochen included, we handle about 128 million passengers as a group. Today, I think we are the second uh, in terms of passenger volume handled by an airport operator, we are the second biggest in the world. And uh, overseas operations, right now, we are in Sabia Gochen as well as in Doha, Qatar, where we do facilities management in the terminal. We don't manage the airport, but uh, one of our objective is to look at opportunities in managing airport worldwide. And uh, we are uh, also a public listed company, 14 BZS in the airport in the world. And Sabia Gochen, our role here is only managing the terminal, the present uh, passenger terminal capacity of 33 million. We manage the cargo terminal as well. We supply fuel facilities management within the building, and uh, we have got an airport hotel. Anything on the air side is by the authorities. We don't uh, manage the air side. Unlike in Malaysia, we manage the whole airport. And uh, the key figures here in Sabia Gochen, in 2017, we handled 31 million passengers. I'll share you on the historical data on passenger growth at uh, Sabia in uh, my next slides. And uh, we have got uh, 66 over percent in terms of passenger growth within the last five years. We just celebrated our 10th anniversary on the 30th of April. Okay, this is uh, where we are. This is how we grew 
from 2004 at Sabia Gochen and 2017, 31.3 million. And this year, up till April, we have handled 10 of a million passengers. We are expecting about 32 million this year. 32.6, in fact. It's, uh, but the, we need more international passengers. We are doing about 30% of the total uh, of international versus 70% of domestic. We need to improve on the international numbers. This is the layout of our airport. We just put in a new uh, boarding, uh, a new boarding hall over here, 25,000 square meters with 8 million capacity. This will be commissioned in July of this year. Once this is commissioned, Sabi Ogochen will have a capacity of 41 million passengers. And this is, I think you know better than me on in terms of the catchment area here. And uh, uh, we have got uh, an increased catchment area, particularly with the the uh, bridge to Bursa and also the third bridge. These are also another view of the catchment area that we have for Sabia Gochen. In spite of the third airport coming up, we are positioning ourselves to capitalize on this. This is the connectivity in terms of the connectivity to Sabia Gochen. This has given us a lot of uh, advantage uh, at Sabia Gochen. <clears throat> this is another uh, linkage networks of ground transportation connectivity to uh, the Sabia Gochen. It's going to be very, very extensive in terms of the network linking all the major cities to uh, Sabia Gochen. The metro works is ongoing right now, right in front of the old terminal, and it's expected to be completed by next year. Our second runway. Right now, we have got uh, a single runway uh, operations at Sabia. The second runway is under construction by uh, 2019 meet will have uh, two runway operations. This is uh, the metro connectivity that's going to be linked to Sabia Gochen, including the fast uh, train service. We have got 123 international destinations, quite extensively covering Europe from Sabia Gochen. And uh, 8th of June, we have, we will see a reinstatement of Emirates into Sabia Gochen. So, uh, Qatar Airways Emirates will provide a very good uh, connectivity to the Asian part, particularly back to Southeast Asia. Uh, we used to travel on Qatar Airways back to Malaysia, Singapore, and uh, it provides a very efficient uh, connectivity transit in Doha. Just within less than two hours, we'll connect it on the next flight direct to Kuala Lumpur. So 8th of June, we'll see Emirates uh, coming in. And as an airport operator, we are also trying to attack as many airlines as possible. We have got our head of uh, airline marketing here with me, uh, and he is tasked to attract more airlines, particularly international airlines, into Sabia Gochen. We have also embarked on a program to provide incentive to airlines. So, Aita, I welcome you. Domestics, uh, we are fully covered in terms of domestic destinations within uh, Turkey. We are fully covered. And uh, Sabia, as you are fully aware, 
is home base to Pegasus and Turkish Airlines second base. As passengers, as our customers, this is what a passenger look for and safety and security at any airport. That's supreme. No issue, no compromise. No long queues. Nobody wants to go into an airport and see long queues. I've got uh, something to share on long queues here. Simple and short check-in process. It should be sweet, simple and short check-in process. Clear signages. This is something which I need the help of universities, uh, Madam Professor, if you may. We need, if you walk in the terminal, if I walk in the terminal with a pass hanging out, definitely, definitely minimum of five or ten will come and ask questions when the sign is right above him. You know, that is quite peculiar. Pardon me, pardon me, pardon me. Very, very sorry. Very peculiar in Turkey. You know, the moment they know you are an airport staff, they come and ask. Even if they are right in front of the check-in counter, they will ask which counter I will go. That is very peculiar. I think we need together uh, with the universities, maybe, how do we educate? Signages are more than sufficient. In Turkish language, in English, uh, in Malaysia, we have got three or four languages. In our national language, in English, in Chinese, in Japanese, uh, just to facilitate the passenger needs. On-time departure. As a port, we would like very much to facilitate on-time departure of all airlines. Fast baggage delivery, we will declare to passengers, first back 17 minutes, last back 25 minutes. No mishandle of baggage or pilferage, clean toilets. These are very basic. Things must work. If you put an expensive walkletters, but it's not, work, not functioning, it doesn't mean anything, you know. Things must be working, lift must be functioning, and commercial offerings. So we would like you as our customers, when you are traveling, spend your money in the airport. Have your chai in the airport, and you are duty free in the airport. This is, we are developing this boarding hall right uh, now, purely for domestic, to increase, to give an additional capacity of 8 million. And we will have four boarding bridges and 20 bus gates for remote parking flight, uh, aircraft. And we'll be commissioned uh, in July of this year and 25,000 square meters. This is some of the capacity announcement that we embark on, and this is what you'll see and what you expect to get in the new boarding hall. We have awarded all the FMB operators that's going to operate within the boarding hall, the new boarding hall, and uh, works is really uh, progressing very, very well. Current runway, the two runway, the second runway is under construction. The current runway, the current terminal, the second terminal. I have a slide to share with you. Upon completion of this boarding hall here, we will embark to remove the old terminal and develop a new facilities for a 25 million capacity. That will take us to 41 plus 25, about 46, close to 70 million. And that will be able to cater for capacity up to 2030. 
we have got the, the plan uh, for the second uh, terminal. This is how it will uh, look like the new terminal. Uh, the new car park, we are going to put new car park as well. And that will be linked by the pier to the current terminal. So it is going to be purely domestic at the new uh, facilities at the old terminal when we re redevelop that one. And the current terminal will be fully international, linked by a pier. These are some of the enhancement we embark on to increase the passenger experience at the airport. But I have to admit that passenger experience begins from the home. From the home while he's on the way to the airport. For that matter, we are working with Ozin University to conduct a basic lesson for airport taxi drivers. Basic English lessons for uh, airport taxi drivers. We are, we have, uh, we have agreed to work with OZ University to conduct a basic English course for taxi drivers coming to the airport. Right now, they can't, they don't even speak basic English. That affects the passenger experience at the airport, particularly foreign passengers. We introduced the international to domestic transfer counter. International to domestic transfer counter, which previously we do not have passengers on domestic or international arrival I have to check out and check in for their next sector to domestic. But now they can transfer and the bags will be transferred uh, accordingly. We have the fast track service. We are upgrading the facilities as well, continuously upgrading the fast track facilities uh, for quick uh, passenger travel through the terminal. It is uh, one experience, I think, uh, Aita mentioned just now, Madam, is the passport control. Passport control is a major items in that need to be re-engineered in Turkey. Together again with the university, if you could, uh, Madam Professor, after these sessions as a re resolution from this passenger experience or Istanbul Travel, uh, Istanbul Hub seminar, a resolution to the government to consider improving the passport control at major entry points in the country. It's, it is a real bottleneck. It is a real bottleneck. It is being managed by the police and uh, it needs to be seriously looked into. We also introduced the open gate concept, centralized security screening and open gate concept. We do have gates seats at the gates, but it is open. And we do proper gate control to ensure passengers bought the right planes at the right gates. We have this graphic flight information system, as uh, Madam uh, from IETA says that one of the items is passengers need to be in control. We also provide these two passengers and those well wishes coming to receive passengers. We provide for the, uh, introduce a new tab where with advertisements, some income from here for baggage tops at the screening, security screenings. Facilities for disabled, disabled passengers when you arrive at the curb site, you just go to these facilities, pick up the phone, someone will pick up and come and pick you at the curb site. There's a seat by the side, but more often than not, not the disabled, not the disabled are sitting here, it's more than able are sitting here. We also have dedicated entrance for 
special uh, products of airlines, Turkish Airlines children, first class, uh, business class passengers, dedicated entrance and dedicated counters to the check-in counters as well as to the lounge. <clears throat> this is, I think, is uh, Turkish Airlines business and privileged class passengers facilities at Sabia. We, to, to manage queues at times, we introduce these red and green lights at every counter. All the check-in counter staff need to do when he uh, is available to serve next passengers, he just press a button to show a green light. So the passenger in the queue just proceed to the green the counter with the green light. And when the when the counter is being served, it a red light will appear. Before this, the staff will have to call next passengers. So with this, we passengers have been have trained themselves to proceed to the counter. So it is not dedicated queue for the dedicated counters, but it's a snake queue and one common queue and you go to the available counters. That is already in place now. As requested by AITA, we have got this uh, in place. Turkish Airlines have got theirs. Pegasus have got their set of check-in kiosks. We are now in the process of working to introduce the auto backdrop, common use auto backdrop. Check-in systems are common use and auto backdrops are common use. But these are dedicated kiosks for dedicated airlines. Our, our uh, check-in counter allocation is not dedicated, it's preferred. But with these kiosks fixed there, it is almost a dedicated check-in counters. You know? So Pegasus have got their sets and Turkish Airlines. We also have these facilities, one kiosk at our air site, at our hotels. Turkish Airlines have got one kiosk for check-in for the hotel guests at our hotel. And soon Pegasus will fix one at the uh, our hotel. These control measures uh, after the uh, the incident in Atatuk Airport, the police introduced these concrete barriers at the curb sites. Additional screening for UK flights, we have got one uh, area dedicated with uh, uh, SRA uh, and facilities for screening of passengers and congestion and passport control. This is a major item. Thank you very much. I just got a sign to say thank you very much. <laughs>